Hello again uh, and thank you so much for all your comments on Twitter and YouTube and for following my channel. It's really lovely to see and to hear from you all and to know that you're all getting on alright. Uh, it's also really nice to think that you guys are following along at home. So again, if you have any suggestions, please do let me know. Otherwise, I'll just uh, keep on going with what I'm doing. Um, but I'd love it to be as helpful as possible. But yeah, thank you for that. That was really lovely. Um, today I'm going to do a bit more of the maths that we were doing yesterday but I'm going to start off with what we normally do in our school day which is a bit of a phonics warm-up. Uh, so we're going to do phonics, then maths, then a little bit of a writing challenge and then I'm just going to teach you a little arty trick at the end. Okay, thanks. Okay, so find a space in the room again and we're going to do a quick stretch before we learn. Um, before I start this one, I'm going to include some links in the description on this video with some really good movement YouTube channels that uh, I use in the classroom and that you might want to use at home. Things that we've done in my class like Cosmic Yoga and Time to Chill. There's just some really nice activities that you can do that keep your body moving while we're inside. So, uh, just for my warm-up, find a space and we'll have a big stretch up again. Okay, stretch your back and your shoulders and stretch right out again and we'll do a big twist this way and a big twist that way. Instead of star jumps today, I want you to see if you can do 10 hops on one leg. So we'll start with our right leg. If you remember my class, we did the left and right trick with our hands to figure out which way is left and which one's right. Your left hand makes an L shape. So we're going to use the other leg, hop on your right leg. 10 times and then we're going to hop on our left leg 10 times just to warm our bodies up. Are you ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then switch to your left leg. That's the one that makes the L shape. Well, your hand does. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hooray, we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with some phonics first of all. I've written a link out here and I'll put the link in the description as well uh, but phonicsplay.co.uk is a really fantastic resource with some free games that you can play so if you find yourself wanting to do a bit more phonics or to play games like Ob and Bob like we play in class then please do head over to phonicsplay.co.uk I'm just going to do a sort of mini phonics today where I'm going to give you some sounds and we're going to think of as many words as we can uh, that have those sounds in them uh, the sounds that we've done before so the first sound I'm going to ask you to think about is this one. So it's A, I and R, and it makes a trigraph altogether. Tri means three when it's written like this. So trigraph, because it's got three letters. So A, I and R, when they're together, make the air sound. In our read, write, ink um, scheme that we do at school, the rhyme for the, well, the mnemonic for this one is Air, air, it's not fair. So if you can come up with an action for that one, maybe stamping your feet and crossing your arms as you say it, that'd be fabulous. Uh, it just helps us remember that it that much better. So for air, I'd like you to think of as many words as you can that have that sound in them. So I'm going to start us off. I can just add the, the letter F before this. And it's also in our air, air, it's not fair. So F, A, I, R, F, air spells fair. So if you could pause the video now and have a little go at writing as many words as you can that have the air sound in. Okay, off you go. Okay, so I've thought of some different ones. You could even have a digraph. Di means two. So you could have ch, air. You could have h, air. Like that one. You could have a lair that maybe a monster lives in. L air, the dark and spooky lair. Uh, ooh, what else? I wonder. We could have stair, like the stairs that you go up. St air. If you found any others, let me know in the comments. That would be lovely to see. Uh, so now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to draw a picture. I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to draw a picture of one of these words or it might be a different air word and I'd like you to as quick as you can write what word you think it is underneath okay okay so the first drawing game we're going to do is I'm going to draw it on here and without peeking at your writing as well can you tell me what 
is this. It looks a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, if you remember that story. So can you write under here which word it is that I'm hoping for you to spell? I'm going to give you about five seconds to try that one. Are you ready? Okay. Chair, yeah, give yourself a tick if you manage to spell that one perfectly. Okay, we're going to go for another one now underneath. So, this one you might get even quicker. Dee -dee. Here we go. So, what is the arrow pointing to? I'm going to give you another five to ten seconds to try that one. Okay, the answer was hair. Spells hair. Well done if you got that one. For this one, I'm going to do one we haven't looked at yet. So it's a bit trickier this. Sometimes in school, we might ask you to get into one of these, get into our... Okay, there's two of them there, that's a clue. What's another word for a team of two? See if you can figure it out, it's four letters long. The answer is... P uh, a pair. And it's really easy to confuse it because we also have this type of pear, don't we? The pear that you eat. But this pear means when there's two. So this spelling, this pear is spelled differently. It's p, p e a r p a r with a really weird spelling of air there. So this one's quite a tricky spelling to get, but this is the usual one. Having a look at these... I want you to think to yourself, where does this sound, air, usually appear in a word? Is it the beginning, the middle or the end? You can write that on your paper now. If you said the end, well done. It's usually at the end. There are some words where that's not the case. So things like fairy, it's there in the middle. <clears throat> Or just the word air, like the air we breathe, that's the beginning, middle and end, I suppose. So it's just usually at the end. So if you're trying to spell a word that ends in air, give this spelling a go first, OK? For the last phonics challenge this morning, I'd like you to write one of these words that we've done today or a different air word that you thought of into a sentence. So uh, I'm going to write the sentence, I have long hair. So... I can't start my sentence with this, and I bet you know why, because that is not a capital I. So we're going to start with a capital letter, I, finger space, have, which is a tricky word, so we do H-A-V-E, have, have, like on the song, which you can also access on YouTube, I think I'll link that one in. I have long, finger space, L, O, ng, L, O, ng, I have long, Hair, huh? Air. There's the word we're thinking of today. And what do I need at the end? A full stop. Okay, so I'm going to give you a bit of time to try and use one of these words to write your own sentence on your paper. Um, my class, I'm looking for super letter join handwriting as well as finger spaces, capital letter, and full stop. Okay, off you go. If you want to share your sentence with uh, me or anybody else that's following, um, then please do message me a photo of your uh, your sentence, either on here, if, if you can, or on Twitter, where I am called at Miss Martins 7. OK, that would be really lovely to see. Thank you. OK, for maths, we're just going to start with a quick warm up. Uh, using some of the tricks that we learnt yesterday about adding. So we're focusing on this symbol again today. Add plus 
more all together loved the suggestions you got in the comments yesterday thank you for those um so we're going to think about this again and i'm going to give you a bit of a word problem today so uh, i already have five cherries one two three four five my friend comes along and gives me six more cherries how many cherries do i have now so on your piece of paper can you draw the five cherries I've already got and try to solve the uh, word problem? I'm getting six more. We know that this word is one of our words that means this symbol. So start with your five cherries and tell me how many I've got if I've got six more. Okay, you can pause the video now and have a go on your paper. So if you've had a go, you might have drawn six actual cherries like I've done. In my class we like to use maths pictures so instead of just taking a long time to draw the actual cherries you could try and draw just circles because we know that they mean cherries in this maths story. So I'm going to draw six of those and add them to my five that I already had. So this is our calculation. We've got five plus six equals so we're going to see what this equals. Five plus six, let's count them up together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the answer to that one is eleven. Give yourself a tick. Well done if you solved that one. So on your paper, can you draw a number line today? That's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to, you can try it with a ruler if you've got one. Uh, I have a ruler here, so I'm just going to do as best I can as straight as I can, a little line all the way across the page. It's a bit wobbly, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to put a line there and a line there just to show that's where it starts and finishes. Um, if you can try, try to write the numbers 1 here and the number 20 there because we're going to count all the way up to 20. To make sure we've got enough room, if you put the number 10 in the middle of that line, because we know that 10 is right in the middle of 1 and 20. So see if you can... Uh, fill this up with numbers. You could even do another trick and put 5 halfway between 1 and 10 and 15 halfway between 10 and 20 and then fill in the numbers. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's much harder to squish in. Even uh, I've struggled with this one here, trying to fit them in. So make your numbers a bit smaller, that's what I'm going to do. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So let's just check our number line again, make sure we've got all the numbers. So it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Just to warm our brains up, let's count backwards from 20. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well done. So we're going to use this today to solve some maths questions with bigger numbers. We're still going to think about add plus more getting bigger. Uh, so this is our symbol for today. We're just going to use larger numbers, so I'll show you what I mean. If we're adding smaller numbers, it's nice to draw these pictures or to count on your fingers, but sometimes if we're adding bigger numbers, we might need to use what's called a number line. So if I start with 11 and I'm adding 6, it's a slightly uh, larger pair of numbers there. So I'm going to start on 11 and I'm going to count on 6. To use our number line today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip a bit of this paper about that big and I'm going to draw a little arrow on it because that's going to show me where to start my jumps each time. So you could do the same with yours or you could use a little pencil to jump like this. Uh, I'm just going to use a bit of paper so it's easy to do at home. Okay, so I'm going to start with the largest number which is 11. I'm going to count on from there. So point your arrow or your pointer at 11. And how many jumps are we going to do? The answer is six. We're going to get six bigger. Now, if we're getting six uh, six more, 
Are we going to go this way up the line or are we going to go this way? What do you think? Okay, if you've had a little think, we're going to go this way because that's where the numbers are getting greater. They're growing this way. If we go that way, the numbers are shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller. So they're worth less and less and less as we get to one. So we're going to start on 11 and get bigger. So we jump in this way six times. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have landed on this number, 17. So in my box, I'm going to know that 11 plus six equals 17. Give yourself a tick if you've managed to do that one. Okay, the next question we're going to try, you can copy this onto your paper. Let's try nine plus nine. This one's a bit different because they're both the same number. So when we're looking for the largest number to start with, we don't actually have one. So you could start with either of these because they're exactly the same. So let's put our pointer on nine. I'll just wait for you guys to be ready. And how many jumps are we going to do? How many, how much more are we getting this time? We start on nine and we're adding nine. So we need to do nine little jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This time we've landed on a one and an eight. What number's that? It's 18. So in your box, you can write the number 18. Give yourself a tick. Okay, this time, we're going to do 2 plus 13 equals something. Hmm, this is an interesting one. We start with a teeny weeny number, the number 2. Let's see how long it takes us to do 13 jumps from number 2. So we start on 2 and we've got to count really carefully for 13 jumps. Let's see if we can do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, just about done it. But that was a lot of jumps to have to remember. Can you think of an even better way that we can solve that without having to remember and do, uh, do those jumps really carefully? Okay, if you've thought of it, we could start with the largest number, the greatest number. So 13 is much greater than 2. So I'm going to start with 13 and just add two. One, two. That was so much easier and we still got the same answer, which was 15. And that's because, which we spoke about yesterday, we know that two plus 13 is the same as 13 plus two. So they're equal. We just did what I call the lazy swap. So the answer was still 15. Give yourself a tick there. Okay, I'm gonna give you uh, one to try on your own now. And then I'll go through it with you in a in a minute. So we're going to start with hmm. Let's go for three plus eight equals something. Off you go. So have a think about which number you're going to start jumping from. Always choose the greater number. So copy this one out into your books, and you can use your number line to try and solve it. I'm going to pause the. If you can pause the video now, that would be lovely. So when you've had a chance to do that one, I think the most sensible option is to choose the largest or greatest number, which is eight. Eight is much more than three. So we're going to start on eight and we're going to add three. We're getting three more because three plus eight is the same as eight plus three. So we'll start on eight and we're going to go one, two, three. So our answer was 11. Well done if you got that one right. For an extra challenge, can you tell me another number sentence using these two numbers that also makes 11? So just next to that one, can you write it here? So we know that 3 plus 8 is 11, so we also know that 8 plus 3 equals 11. You could have also done that swap we saw yesterday and put 11 equals 8 plus 3. Or 11 equals 3 plus 8. Well done if you thought of either of those because that's a trickier way where you put the uh, the answer, I suppose, on this side because equals just means is the same as. Okay, so I'm going to set you some challenges to try on this page now. 
they'll just appear okay, so I've written some challenges on this page again we're starting with easier but still tricky I'd recommend you start with these ones because it's more like what we've done together then if you want to challenge it goes on to harder so we've got some trickier numbers here and a bit of swapping involved then the mega challenge here we've got some really tricky ones okay so when you're ready to start and copy out the questions just press pause on the video and you can start copying these into your books okay good luck okay so i'm going to mark through the answers now if you are using your number line feel free to join along uh, as i mark the answers just to check so six plus five we start with the greater number so i'm going to start with six do five jumps one two three four five the answer was eleven give yourself a tick eight plus seven i'm going to start with the larger number which is eight plus seven one two three four five six seven the answer to that one is 15 11 plus 3 start on the greater number 11 and add three jumps 1 2 3 is 14 the next one 15 plus 3 start on the greater number which is 15 and add 3 1 2 3 which is 18 for this one 12 plus 4 we're going to go on here 12 plus 4 1 2 3 4 oops I've done something wrong because I've ended up with 19. Can you spot what I've what mistake I've made there? Let's go back. Go back in time. Do, do, do. I started on 15. Oh, sorry, I started on 12. But instead of doing four equal jumps, what did I do? I did some silly jumps there. Make sure that each of your jumps only goes to the next number. We should only be jumping like this don't do silly big jumps like I did just then so we're going to do 12 plus 4 1 2 3 4 so the answer should be 16 the next one 9 plus 8 start with the greatest number again so 9 I'm going to do 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the answer was 17 okay this next one the big challenge here is I wanted you to spot that I've put the smallest number first the least number so can you find the greatest number and start jumping from there so 12 we start jumping here and we're going to add to 1 2 14 the next one 6 plus 9 again the, num the greater number comes second we're going to do 9 plus 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 I'm going to show you the jumps as well 1 2 3 4 5 6 15 18 and 1 start on 18 and just do one little jump and the answer is 19 if you started on one and did an 18 jump that would be much harder because look how many jumps you've got to remember yeah even i wobbled there that's tricky remembering all those jumps this next one uh the first one 10 plus 9 put your arrow on 10 and do nine jumps one two three four five six seven eight nine so the answer is 19 you might have been able to spot the tens and ones there and put it together in your head well done if you managed that two plus 15 again the greater number is second so we're going to start with our greater number and we're going to add the little one which makes it easier so we're going to do 15 plus two one two is 17 okay this next one is so mean i've given you a triple addition again i've got three plus two plus eight Again, if we start with the greatest number and then add the other two, that's easier. So if we go eight and then add three, one, two, three, and then I've still got to add the two, one, two, then we get to 13. Another way to solve that is you might have spotted I hid a number bond in there again. So two plus eight actually makes 10. So we're really, we'll have to swap pens. We're really doing three plus 10 if you spotted those two joining up together. This next one was a bit cruel because I know that our number line only goes up to 20 today. So 20 plus 1, you will have had to count on in your head or even draw a little extra 21 on there. So the answer to 20 plus 1 is 21. Okay, well done, everybody. Whoops, that's a funny smiley face. <laughs> Fantastic work. Okay, we're going to move on to some English now. So we're going to practice our writing today just with some simple sentence work. Uh, but it's not always as simple as we think because there's quite a lot of things we need to remember with sentences. We need to remember to always have a capital letter at the start of our sentence or if you've got a name uh, or a place or a, a day of the week, 
or month of the year, they need capital letters. Um, we also need to make sure we are having finger spaces. This is one that always crops up with people forgetting those. So in between every word, you can use your other finger to actually help you. Or you could just get a piece of paper. You could even use your jumping paper from maths to leave little spaces in between your words. We need capital letters, full uh, finger spaces, full stops as well, which shouldn't be that big. That's just I've just drawn that one to show you. Full stops and you need to read it again to see if it makes sense. So what picture can I draw for that? I'm going to draw a tick, see if it makes sense, okay? Capital letters, finger spaces, full stops, makes sense. These are the ingredients or the rules of our writing that makes super sentences. So I'm going to write a sentence on here and I want you to tell me if you can spot what's not quite correct with this one. So I'm going to put I am writing. Notice how weird the word writing is. It starts with a W. I am writing. Hmm, I've made a few mistakes there, haven't I? On your piece of paper, can you pause the video and write this sentence out, but correctly, because there are a few things from our rules box. I'm going to put these in a box. A few things from our rules box that I have missed out. So pause the video now. And okay, if I get a pen and I have a look at this sentence that I've written. First, I'm going to look for capital letters. I have not included any, so that one there is not quite correct. Have I got finger spaces? Yeah, I have actually. So finger spaces I've got. Have I got a full stop? Nope, not quite. Does it make sense? Yeah, I am writing. So I had two out of the four, but I missed these two. So your sentence would look something like this. I am writing full stop. Remember, a full stop co comes at the end of a full idea. So if you just wrote um, I am full stop, Oh, actually, that's a bad example. If you just wrote, I like, full stop, that doesn't quite make sense because there isn't something to finish off the idea. You'd have to put another word here, maybe a noun, so a person, a place or a thing, to finish this idea. So I like ice cream. You could have that one. And then that would mean that's a full idea. I like ice cream. So then we can put a full stop, okay? So the next challenge we're going to do is another sentence. I'm going to make another mistake and I'd like you to see if you can correct it underneath on your page. So I'm going to write... Uh, monkeys are cheeky. Full stop. Okay, I've definitely got my capital letter there, and I've got my full stop. It seems to make sense, but there's something I've missed. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out and rewrite it. Okay, if you spotted it, it's this bit here. Da -da -da -da. I have not done a finger space between monkeys and R, so it turns into monkeys are like that, which is a bit of a crazy word. So let's try it again. Monkeys. Finger space, ah, uh, finger space, cheeky. Well done if you've spotted that one, full stop. So now it's got capital letters, it's got finger spaces, it's got a full stop and yes, it makes sense, fantastic. Okay, underneath here I've written a much longer sentence this time, it's all of this big chunk here. So I'm going to read it to you and I want you to see if you can spot the mistake I've made. So I went, went, to, here's a tricky word, the, the, shop, shop, and it, fun, full stop. Whoa, there's something seriously wobbly here. Can you see if you can figure out what I've done here to go so wrong? See if you can write it on your piece of paper now, correctly. Oh, press pause as well. Okay, I'm going to get my marking pen ready. So I've put, I went to the, the shop and it fun. It's got the capital letter, well done me. It's got the full stop, well done me. 
It's got the finger spaces well done me, but does it make sense? I don't think it does. So we've got to reread it and double check. I went to the, the shop. I've put the word the twice. So I'm going to cross that one out. Should be, I went to the shop and it fun. Which word am I missing there? Not just it fun, it was fun. Because we're talking about what I already did. I went to the shop. So we use a past tense word, was. I went to the shop and it was fun. Okay, that's a much better sentence. Well done. On this page now, I'm just going to write some challenges for you to do and I'll explain them in a moment. Okay, so I've put some challenges on this side of the page. It says, your challenge. Correct the sentences. So I put one, two, three, four sentences for you to try and rewrite using all of our uh, writing rules in the box here. So you've got to check, have they have they got capital letters, finger spaces, full stops, and do they make sense? Um, once you've tried this one, I've drawn six different pictures in these boxes. So what I'd like you to do is invent your own sentence about each picture. On this one here, I've just written the word Jim because it's a really strange spelling. It's G-Y-M. So if your sentence has the word Jim in it, just use that to help you spell it, okay? I'm looking forward to hearing about some of the sentences you've written on here because I bet they'll all be really different. Okay, so you can pause the video now and get started. So let's have a look at some of the things I did a bit wobbly on here. So this one here says, my school is cool, full stop. Great full stop, great finger spaces. But I can see that I'm missing a capital M here. So we should have really had a capital M. Okay, the next one. I like comfy pyjamas. Again, we've got the finger spaces. We've got, it makes sense. We've not got a full stop. So that was that one. We did have a capital letter as well, so that was good. The next one, the cat sat on the mat. We're missing two things here. It makes sense, so that's correct. We have a full stop, so that's correct. But can you see, I've not really done very good finger spaces between there and between there. So it looks like the cat sat on the mat rather than the cat sat on the mat. Also, I've forgotten to do a capital T there. So it's not a real sentence. The next one says, I ate some, some chips and they tasty. Love this exclamation mark. So that's one good thing that's fantastic. We have finger spaces which is great. I've got a capital I, which is great. But can you see here, I've written the word some twice. I ate some, some chips. So cross one of those out or rewrite it on yours. I ate some chips and they tasty. I'm also missing a word here. What word do you think it could be? I ate some chips and they were tasty. W -e -r -e. W-E-R-E, -E. that's a tricky word there because it looks, it makes such a strange sound at the end, that er. Uh, they were tasty. I'm not going to go through these because I imagine that all of yours are different, but what I'd like you to do is just check that you've got all of these four things for each of those. If you want a mega challenge, you could pick one of these again and try and also include an adjective. So in my class, we know that adjectives are describing words. So you could describe the lion's mane, you could say maybe it's fluffy or furry or matted, that means quite scruffy and knotted together. You could say the penguin is cheerful or happy, the ice cream is tasty, uh, the uh, girl is strong, the rat is happy or maybe the cheese is smelly or tasty. So see if you can write another sentence for me, but with an adjective in it, that's your challenge there. Okay, well done everyone. Okay, for the last part of today, I thought I would show you a little cheeky arty trick. It's just to, a really simple way of drawing a pig. So all you have to do is the capital, a capital E, a capital M up here, a capital W, another W, and then a lowercase e like that. You might see the shape already. So it's E-M-W-W-E. And then you just connect up the lines like this. Do -do -do -do, and give it a little eye. And then you've got yourself a pig. Ta-da! So on a Thursday in our school, we usually have something called Mystery Reader, where one of the adults comes in and reads a story that they've chosen. 
Uh, obviously, that's really tricky to do when we're on when we're in self isolation. But if you have a story at home, maybe you could ask an adult to read it to you. Um, there's a really good author called Oliver Jeffers who's streaming um, himself reading some of his storybooks each day, uh, and I've retweeted that on Twitter. If you want to have a look and click on that link, link. Um, Otherwise, if you did want to read a story or if one of your adults wants to read a story and send the video across to me, um, I could put it on this channel and then we can share it with the rest of our class. That would be lovely. Um, so just let me know if you'd really like to do that. Thank you for watching today, everybody. And again, just leave some comments down below or let me know uh, how you got on on Twitter. Uh, love hearing from you and hope you have a lovely day. See you later.